us regress now and look at how we can effectively strategize on stopping this kind of situation. We have enough on our hands, not to talk of having uh, Cameroonians uh, or separatist group from that country killing our, our people. I have tonight Senator Ali Ndume who joins me now here in our Abuja studio to discuss further. Senator Ndume is the chairman of the Senate Committee on the Army. Thank you so much, um, distinguished Senator, for joining us tonight. Thank Let you me very start much. by asking you. This is a very sad incident, an external aggression on our own people, on Nigerian soil. What's your take on, on, on the situation? Well, uh, I don't want you to take it the way you just said now, like an external aggression. Uh, you know, I've listened to the governor, and the actual situation is that um, <clears throat> there is more of communal or tribal conflict that affects community along our borders. And you know the border of Nigeria and Cameroon stretches from Taraba and even down to Cross River, is it? Mm -hmm. Up to uh, Borno in my local government, Goza. We have several villages, towns in the, uh, across the border and mostly is divided by river and you can see that the Manga village is a settlement, it's a resettled settlement from the, the location of the dam construction that were moved along. Uh, as the governor said, I don't, uh, the details are not yet out, but this, kind, uh, this type of uh, communal clashes between tribes and um, communities and the river happens you know, not frequently, but, you know, it can happen, especially these days, for basically economic and sometimes political reasons, and in rare cases, even religious. I mean, it brings a fur that whatever is happening on, on, uh, in neighboring countries, in other areas <coughs> that are outside of our jurisdiction, sometimes we need to be uh, conscious of it, and we need to take uh, uh, precautions uh, so that it doesn't spill into our own situation and uh, the governor said that he had cautioned about uh, s things like these to the military to the leadership of the military but according to him nothing has been done well when communities are living together quietly like in my own uh, let me use the one i know in my local government we have a town called kirawa it's a border town and you have the same kirawa in cameroon and the only demarcation is the river that divides the two. So sometimes even in my local government, if I want to go to Asgashia, which is another border town that borders Kebo, it's also a river that divides the Asgashia, Cameroon, and Asgashia, uh, uh, Nigeria. Then you go further to uh, Kogum, an area of village called Kogum too. Still, it's a border town in my local government, where you have the same tribe. In Kirawa, the same tribe, Mandara, people are living in Nigeria. And right now that I'm speaking to you, there are no Nigerians in the, Kira the Nigerian part of Kirawa. But life is normal in the Cameroon part because of the insurgency. They have moved over to the Cameroon. So the Nigerians in that community... They no longer live in the Nigerian, Nigerian side. So yes. they moved out. They moved to the next, just across the river. So we thought that um, most people have returned to their community. No, they are state. returning. We are talking about returning them. They are ready to return. The Cameroonian government, we visited them recently. They are ready to return. And we are, the government is planning on returning them all uh, by December. That is next month. And what we need to do now is to rehabilitate their you know, destroyed houses and infrastructure. But they live right across. I mean, the river dividing Nigeria, uh, Kirawa, and that of Cameroon is not more than, so more than 20 meters. That's close. Yeah. I mean, no, I, you can talk to your neighbor in the Cameroon side. Uh, so, but then, uh, as I'm saying, in this case, they are not only the community, but they were resettled from the uh, dam area. When they were compensated and moved, that is what happened around that manga area. But I don't have the details. Mm -hmm. But let me give you uh, <clears throat> sometimes this kind of situation that happened. The Kowon people, uh, that is one village in my local government, that share border, the same community, 
of Mafa people. There is a tribe they call Mafa. They live <coughs> across the border, the border with the Cameroon. And at one time, they had the, a clash between the Nigerians and another tribe that were living in the same locality, which are this different tribe. They had this tribal conflict. When they were fighting, it is natural for those that have neighbor across, just across, will give them support. And the situation nearly degenerated. It took a lot, but then army was not involved, and the police were able to contain it. I remember that was it in 19, I think in the year 2000 or so. But for Cameroon in Kirawa and Nigeria, the Kirawa, Nigeria, and Kirawa, uh, uh, Cameroon, they are from the same tribe. Is there a threat on our territorial integrity? There. No, I'm asking, in some of these areas. No, would, uh, this one is not a, a threat on our territorial integrity. What happened, as I said, what I'm suspecting, because the reports are not clearly out, it's more of a communal clash than issue of... Besides, the Ambazonians are st a stateless group. So how can a stateless group attack a country that is a state? But they attack their people. Yeah, they attack their people. That is it. So, but so in, 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 uh, theoretically, we might be trying to find a word to describe it, but people's lives are lost. And so whether or not their intention is to attack Nigeria or... I mean, but now they've killed people, and so th that's the reason why. So, yeah, but you understand. Well, you don't confuse the two, uh, Sheung. What I'm saying is the security to every Nigerian is a constitutional matter and is, in fact, is the main purpose of government. Absolutely. But that is not to say that, oh, Cameroon or whatever Ambazonia you call them are threatening Nigeria. Those are things. They are threatening Nigerians along the border. There is a community issue that affects Nigerians among the border. Now that this incident has happened here, there, and it continues, before it escalates to a certain level, the government needs to take measures to protect our people across the border community, across the community border. Before, in my local government, where I told you we have three or four villages, that border Cameroon. You don't need police, you don't need anything. You just drive either your motorcycle or car and you stop by the Ajandem or what they call it, Ajandem, or Nigerian immigration asks you where you are going, who are you, then that's all. Nobody was anticipating this. But as the time goes on, uh, as I said, economic issues, pressures come up, political and this, that, that creates this kind of a situation. Because I mean, but my fear, it, yeah. no, let me say, uh, well, I'm, well, I'm not saying Nigerians should go to sleep, but Nigerians, the way I read from the online social distance, people just talk out of ignorance and escalate a situation to look as if, oh, Nigerians are being attacked by Cameroon and all the people are dying and all that. Well, this incident is a serious one that needs to be looked into. But that is not to say that Nigeria is in any way under threat from any of the neighboring countries. That's what I want to say. And the Nigerian army... Because they are engaged in unconventional war everywhere. <laughs> Cameroon will never dare Nigerians militarily. The Abolizonians, or whatever you call them, they can never dare Nigerians. One battalion, two battalions will, will, will deal with them. But we have scattered problem in the country. Nigerian army is involved everywhere. And as the governor said, because we have been enjoying peace several for all these decades, we are thinking that, oh, so the police is not equipped. Uh, <clears throat> the army is uh, the air force. They uh, virtually managing with absolute equipment for ceremonies. Only once in a year they do uh, independence. This, but now we are faced with uh, threats, security threats mm -hmm. everywhere. Because some of the stories that <coughs> come up, I mean, lately you will hear that even some of these uh, the threats within these border communities, even in your Borno state, that there were stories as to uh, some communities uh, sh coming under the shield of these uh, ter Boko Haram because of some of the other threats that they see, paying them to, for them to, to, I mean, these are stories that we hear. Yeah. That is another mixture. Here we are with the issue in Manga, which the governor said here, that he has not received report. We cannot be talking on it in the studio. But I'm asking. asking now. I'm Secondly, the ones we are talking about now is a different thing. Insurgents invaded Borno State, 
At one time in 2014, they took over over 22 local government. The Nigerian army have been engaging them for years, for 10 years now. We are getting to the end or near end of it. Then another group emerged that is more deadly and more professional. That is the ISWAP group. Now they take their territories and mark the spot, soft spot areas, especially the abandoned villages. So many of them, you know. In my own local government, we used to have so many settlements, but all ran away and we are occupying only four or five now. So the other structures that are existing, the insurgents find them convenient, especially on the main highways, to station themselves there. This is why you hear of, like, between Dambua and Bu, it's only about 80 kilometers. But that is like a route of the insurgents' air swaps, especially they find it convenient to rush across. So they take their time sometimes because of the absence of the military presence there, and the village Sabongari, for example, have been abandoned. They go there, occupy all the houses, and when they chase us out, they, they occupied my, my house in, my, in, 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 in Goza until the army came and took over and drove them away. Then our people started coming gradually. So it's a different thing to say, okay, in Sabongari, the people are not there, but they have run to Gamboa and stay in the camp. If you have your house, and so the villages are being wooed by the insurgents now to come back as long as you recognize us as a government. Those are the so the, so the terrorists don't hold any territory in your in Burundi state. Not holding anywhere, but there are some. They are abandoning in those. In yes, there are some towns that are abandoned, and they find it convenient to hibernate there, and in fact launch attacks or launch roadblocks sometimes. By the time we inform the military and the military runs there, they disappear. And in fact, these days they have a strategy of operating in, you know, in the forest now. From the top, the army can only, the aircraft can only see what is visible. So they normally hide under trees or they assemble under big... So this, the, the, the stories that uh, some of the terrorists protect some of these, uh, the natives and the natural. stories, you know. You are hearing from the horses. And now I'm all confirmed. So it's a story I'm that the horses here, so let's hear from the man. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are telling you about stories. I'm telling you about what is actually... I, mean, I want you to confirm. Uh -huh. I'm truth. saying, I gave you an example of so many. Dambua is a local government under, under my uh, senatorial district. From Dambua to Sabongari, mm -hmm. there is a town called Sabongari, which is in between Dambua and Bio. Uh, because that route, they have a route. The insurgents have a convenient route for them. The army tried to station uh, a, a, a front operating base there. But they intensively you know, kept on and we lost some soldiers there. So by the time the super camp concept came in, we moved the, the Nigerian army moved the, the front operating base from Sabongari to Dambua to right. operate from there. Now the Boko Haram took over the place and stayed there. So army will come and, on, on patrol and chase them away. By the time they leave them, tomorrow they come back because they are mobile people anyway. All right. So, but not that is not to say now that in Sabongari, uh, Sab in Borno South, okay. in Borno South, there is a local government or a territory that is being controlled mm -hmm. by... Senator Alin Brune, Senator Cha on the army. Thank you so much indeed for the insight that you have shared tonight. At least it's clear to some of the things that are happening. Just Thank to you. add that Nigerians should not panic. This is not like there is a big threat to the Nigerian territory now. It's there is a communal, yeah, communal clash between the stateless people and the people around that, and the governor will clarify as he said. Mm -hmm. But that is not to say that the Nigerian territory is under, by, threat. Is under threat from any angle, and it will not. Thank you so much for the assurance that you have given tonight. <laughs> Thank you. That's our show for tonight, everyone. My thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimbale. Bye for now.